to the Jews reject the story he came unto his own and his own received him not, John 1.11, his mother's people rejected his tale and with good reason. They well knew he had destroyed their temple and city and slaughtered their people because of his senseless hatred, John 15.25, and that he was now the author of the new fiction by which Rome was hoping to control the Judean masses. They also knew that while finishing the Gospel of Matthew and writing his account of the war entitled The Jewish War, he was the Roman general who in 73 destroyed the last three Jewish outposts, Macarius, Herodion, and then Masada. In the semi-fictional story of the war which he wrote he gave himself, as conqueror of Masada, the fictional name Flavius Silva. He knew the details of the siege of Masada intimately because he was the the one who conducted it. He wrote that the defenders who committed suicide totaled 9,602 because, as the explanation later of his code system will explain, 600 stood for Christ, 300 stood for the cross, and 60 stood for the name Calpurnius Piso. Then he inserted into the Gospel of Mark after the year 75 the fallen commander of Masada, Eliezer ben Yair. 3 He makes him Jairus, in Mark 5.22. Then he puts him into Luke 8.41 as Lazarus. He was teasing that he, Piso, because his alter ego creation was Jesus, could heal and raise from the dead, whereas the Jews had been forced by him to perish at Masada. Because of the destruction in the war, Judea after 70 was desolate and underpopulated. With little left to tax, the Herodian aristocracy had gone to Rome permanently to live. The Sadducean priesthood, appointees, and in-laws of the Herods, were dead at the revolutionaries' hands, and the remainder scattered to Rome. Even the Essenic visionaries in the desert were dead at Piso's hand. The only surviving Judean leadership were the non-political or fence-straddling Pharisees, who after seventy changed their names to rabbis. The remaining Judaeans looked to them for guidance. Their leader, Yochanan ben Zakkai, had obtained Vespasian's permission to establish a school at Yavnet. In return the rabbis now taught pacifism and accommodation to Vespasian's imperial wishes. But unlike the Herods before them, they were not fully practical. For they refused to accommodate Piso's wishes as to religion. They refused to instruct their people to accept his story. The True Authorship of the New Testament 4 The Little Man Up in the Sycamore Tree in Luke Chapter 19 who becomes a follower of Jesus. Rabbi Gamliel, Gamaliel, is inserted not only as the teacher of Paul, Acts 22.3, but also as the speaker at the Council of Jerusalem warning that the apostles should be let alone, Acts 5.38-39. Even Rabbi Akiva would be added to Acts, as a Gabus, Acts 11.28 and 21.10, and as Siva, Acts 19.14. More vengeance was wrought by Piso by his picturing the Jews, in the successive Gospels, as increasingly evil. In Matthew chapter 23, Jesus repeatedly calls the scribes and Pharisees hypocrites and even vipers but does not include the people. In Matthew 3.7, also, the Pharisees and Sadducees are called offspring of vipers this time by John the Baptist. But by the time of Luke 3.7, it is not merely the leaders but the crowds whom John the Baptist calls the offspring of vipers. And in Acts 23.12, written 96-100, it is the Jews, and not merely the Pharisees or Sadducees, who form conspiracy to kill Paul. By the time of the Gospel of John, year 105, the author, Piso's son, Justice, has Jesus tell the Jews who challenge him, You are of, your, father devil, John 8.44, even when Piso absolves the villains of culpability Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, Luke 23.34, dash it is the Roman soldiers, and not the Jews, whom he excuses. It was true that none of the actors knew what because none of the fictional characters could be present to observe the writing of the story. The NT pictures the Jews as the enemies of Jesus, of Paul, and of the message of the Gospel. Piso's son Procuulus, writing the epistle to the Romans, in 11.28 explained the reason why the Jews were being pictured as the enemies of the new believers, as concerning the gospel, they, the Jews, are, enemies because of you, for your sakes. 
is, in order that the people would believe the story. The author of I and 2 John admits why the Jews were then opposing the gospel they were refusing to confess that Jesus Christ had come in, the, flesh, I John 4.3, 2 John, verse 7. The author's response was to label such opponents as deceivers and antichrist, Ibid. 3 The authorship of the New Testament books let God be true, but every man a liar. Romans 3.4 the main authors of the New Testament books were Arius Calpurnius Piso, Josephus, his son, Fabius Justus, his granddaughter's husband, Pliny the Younger, and his son, Julius. Following is a list of the actual authorship of each of the books of the New Testament, approximate name of the book year written the original Mark 60 CE Matthew 70-75 the present Mark 75-80 Luke 85-90 John 105 Acts of the Apostles 96-100 Romans 100 I Corinthians, Galatians and Ephesians 100-103 2 Corinthians, Ephesians 103-105 Colossians 106-107 I Timothy 105 2 Timothy 107 the actual author Lucius Calpurnius Piso Arius Calpurnius Piso Arius Calpurnius Piso Arius Calpurnius Piso with Pliny's help Justice Calpurnius Piso chapters 1 to 15 AC Piso with Justice help chapters 16 to 17 by Justice chapters 18 to 28 some written by Justice some by Pliny Procu Lucius Calpurnius Piso Pliny Justice Justice with his son Julianus helped Pliny Justice. 5. The True Authorship of the New Testament Titus 103-105 Pliny Philemon 105-110 Justice with help of Julianus James 110 Justice I and 2 Peter 110-115 Procu Luz I, 2, and 3 John 110 to 115 Julius Calpurnius Piso Jude 110 to 115 Julius Revelation 136 to 137 Julius Hebrews 140 Flavius Arianus Arian aka Appian younger grandson of Piso by Claudia Phoebe the church fathers between 100 and 105 additional Christian books were already being done by the same authors who were finishing the New Testament itself Julius wrote an epistle as Clement of Rome. Pliny wrote a number of epistles as St. Ignatius. Procuulus wrote one as St. Polycarp. By these writings, the authors were installing themselves, in their own time, as the legitimate successors of the apostles Peter and Paul who had supposedly written in the middle of the past century. This facade entitled them, as they now went among their new believers, to be the legitimate propagandizers and interpreters of the Christian writings. The Septuagint. Father, too, was busy. Piso was amending the Greek Septuagint. In his Gospels he had strengthened his story by misquoting places from the Hebrew Scriptures. He changed language in the Septuagint to make it conform with the NT misquotes. That way, there would be an alleged correct translation of the Hebrew scriptures with which the NT quotations agreed the Apocrypha. Piso wished to create a strong foundation on which to place the new faith. So between 100 and 115 he recreated the story of the 400 lost years of Jewish history. He did this by also writing most of the 14 books of the Apocrypha, including Esdras, I Maccabees, Judith, Tobit, Bel and the Dragon. By making Jewish history brave and glorious, the empire's peoples would more readily accept it as their own history and become the new Israel. The Writings of Orion Later, between 130 and 150, Orion, Orionus, longer form of his grandfather's name Arius, would emulate him. He would use Piso's pseudonyms of Flavius and Barnabas. And he would compose, in addition to Hebrews, many Christian books, the Shepherd of Hermas, Barnabas, the Didache, Martyrdom of Polycarp, Epistle to Dionetus, as well as 24 volumes on Roman history, an account of Alexander's campaign into India, the writings of the purported astronomer Ptolemy, and the lecture notes of Epictetus, his Stoic instructor, whom he created.